Wow, what an honor to be uh, amongst so many eminent speakers uh, today. Uh, really, uh, you know, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, very engaging dialogues and discussions. Uh, Dilip, I've got to say that I've shrunk a couple of inches uh, under the weight of trying to give a fitting finale in the 10 minutes. And at my height, I can't afford to shrink, right? <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to try and keep up, right? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, well, it's always such a delight to be, um, you know, amongst uh, such an August audience. I'm very delighted to see so many of our clients amongst uh, the award winners, uh, as well as, uh, you know, the, the eminent speakers today. It's a good feeling to know that you get chosen by the best. So let me start by, you know, saying that 22 years ago, when I was uh, at the cusp of choosing a higher education institute for myself, the only thing that I was worried about at that time was, will I get a job of my choosing after I graduate? I wasn't really worried about how the higher education would develop me as an individual. Cut to 22 years later, and despite the phenomenal leap in India's higher education uh, environment, majority of the aspiring students today still have the same question as I did so many years ago. I'd say that I'm thus very happy to be here amongst you all to talk about a topic that is of absolute relevance as we set out to enable world-class education in India. So, let me start by actually sharing a few facts with you all. So, in the US, 75% of high school seniors are accepted to their first choice colleges, but over half can't afford to attend. When you look at the India scenario, Higher education in India has a net enrollment ratio of 25.2. That's significantly lower than the net enrollment ratio of 63.37 of K-12 schools. So less than half of the students who go to school actually pursue higher education in India. It's a staggering, staggering figure. China has one of the largest higher education uh, ecosystems in the world. Uh, they have about 37 million students who are enrolled in higher education today. India will have an influx of over 20 million first-generation students by 2020. So in the next couple of years, India is actually going to surpass China as the largest higher education market in the world. Between 2000 and 2014, the number of students in higher education globally more than doubled to 207 million. In the India scenario, the number of universities and similar institutions in India grew by 25% between years 2014 and 2018. So what a correlation between you know, the, the global education landscape and the developing ed education landscape in India. So it's no surprise that the higher education landscape is shifting. It's driven by social, economic, digital and cultural forces that are impacting students globally. The demographics, needs, expectations, and behaviors of university students are changing, and along with them, the campus environment. So how do we stay ahead of these changes? How do we make ourselves future ready to meet these ever-evolving needs? At Sodexo, we're very passionate about constantly researching, constantly understanding the changes, and sort of staying ahead of the curve. Uh, so, you know, we leveraged our own expertise and our experience of serving more than 700 universities globally, and together with Sodexo's uh, Quality of Life Institute, as well as a global panel of higher education experts, we set out to identify and understand five key trends shaping the future of the overall student experience at the campus. So what are these five trends? And are they different from our assessment of the changing education landscape? Let's try and take a look. So going on to the first trend here, and the first trend says going beyond academics. You know, we've had uh, all our eminent speakers today talk about um, what are the universities of the future. You know, are we actually giving the students today education that's good enough to prepare them for the future? And well, you know, that's, it's a very difficult question to answer. So our first trend tells us that universities today need to go beyond academics. Why do we need to do that? Well, we know that the rapid changes in technology, automation, internet of things, robotics, 
are completely changing the way workforce operates. Students who graduate in 2019 are actually going to end up doing jobs that don't exist today. I mean, that in itself is staggering. We also see that the global market is much more interconnected. As technology has broken down barriers, you know, you've you've got a very global workforce. There's an emphasis on skills, particularly those which students cannot obtain in classrooms anymore. So globally, students are concerned whether their college or university education has prepared them fully for operating in a global environment. Going back to my own example earlier, even today, a staggering 56% of Indian students are worried about getting a job after graduation. 35% are worried whether or not they would get a job in the stream that they're taking education in. This, by the way, is based on a 2017 university lifestyle survey that Sodexo uh, conducted with Indian students. And this isn't different from you know, what I hear when I go across the multiple universities that we partner with. This is a very, very sort of common theme that I hear from students who I interact with. So what actions can universities take? Well, first and foremost, mental wellness is the need of the hour. I think universities really need to understand that now versus letting the students go be uh, you know, in a workforce environment and sort of struggle there. Students are very eager to positively impact their mental health. At Yale University, for example, 1,200 students registered in a voluntary course entitled Psychology and the Good Life within days of it opening up. That's the level of support students want. Well, university faculty need to play a very pivotal role in developing balanced, culturally astute graduates by understanding the value of student value, being, you know, well-being and maintaining an environment that's very conducive to free thought, open communication, and diverse opinions. Students need to understand how the studies they're pursuing can be applied in the real world. By providing a range of research opportunities and clearer integration with real world projects, universities can better prepare students for, from, you know, for what is to come. So it has to go outside of the traditional classrooms. You know, for example, visiting a refugee camp to learn about human rights crisis, you know, participating with government officials in developing, thinking through uh, the needs of smart cities and what kind of recommendations can be given to develop smart cities, participating in startup incubators. All of these are great examples of essentially promoting a deeper understanding for students. Moving on to trend two, and this is oh so crucial for the Indian landscape. Engaging first-generation students. You know, I think earlier I shared a statistic that uh, there's going to be an influx. There's going to be an influx of about 27 million first-generation students in India. We all know that globally, as well as in India, the middle class is rising. Uh, we will have actually a majority of population by 2020 that will fall under the middle class. Those in the emerging middle class are likely to be first-generation students, and they're going to be facing a plethora of challenges given their social and economic capital. So, what are some of the challenges that the universities need to be mindful for these first generation students? Again, please remember that these are going to be the biggest influxes into the university campuses in the future. First and foremost, a lack of college environment, or a, a, rather a lack of awareness of college environment. For the first generation students, you know, with very limited insights to the inner working of a higher education campus, they tend to struggle to understand the roles and expectations of students and faculty. The right connections can typically help students secure internships and much sought after job applications. Unfortunately for uh, first generation students, they often lack such connect, such network and social and economic capital. Experts indicate that the first generation parents provide different kinds of support than their second and third generation counterparts. Well, these cultural differences, you know, often result in the first generation students receiving less guidance, whether environmental, situational, motivation levels are low, um, and you know, stuff like poor grades, missing out in exams, these are uh, sort of incidents that don't get properly addressed. 
Moving on to some of the key facts very quickly on the first generation students. And I'm basically going to talk about the fact that 40% of first generation uh, college students are from low to middle income families. These students today have more inhibitors than enablers in their higher education pursuit. So how can the higher education institutes be prepared for these first generation students? How can they make them successful? First and foremost, despite the many obstacles, the first generation students bring a wide array of strengths to the university experience. Many are highly motivated, extremely resourceful, appreciative of the assistance, attributes that make for educational success. Universities should thus be really focused on providing support services such as onboarding and mentorship where students are actually you know matched with faculty advisors who are former first generation students this goes a long way in helping them make that transition it's very important to help the first generation students in fostering meaningful relationships with other students staff and mentors as that can then enable them to create a very strong and powerful support network and equally customizing attention and support makes students feel that they belong in a higher education program and that they deserve to be there. For example, the University of North Carolina at Capitol Hill, there's about a 19% of influx of first generation students. What they've done is that they've created a dedicated website that offers a wealth of resources for first generation students and parents. I think that's an absolute best practice to replicate over here in India. Very quickly on to trend three, and you know, this is really no surprise, as uh, technology continues to rapidly transform our lives. You know, we're moving away from paper to nifty iPads, as we can see, and, uh, and I think, I mean, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Many undergrad university students today are digital natives. They expect easy access to a plethora of digital platforms that can enhance their everyday experiences from recruitment to daily student life, post-grad interactions, technology is becoming an increasingly important factor in student engagement. Well, when you look down there, and it's you know, one of the key facts that I want to highlight, and it's uh, really not a very surprising fact, is that 98% of millennials today own smartphones. Now think about it from a university or a higher education standpoint. On the mobile app, push through some contact, e-learning, whether it's on the mobile app, through the various aspects of a campus, there are multiple things that can be done through technology. This is the perfect vehicle for delivering powerful personal learning experiences whilst they are at campus. So, what are some of the calls to action here? There must be avenues for blended learning in university campuses. A combination of digital media and traditional classroom-led activities. I think I spoke about that a bit you know, earlier as well. This provides students with the freedom to customize their own learning. In order for university to deliver very personalized student experiences, we must focus on gathering and managing the right data to create student profiles based on their campus activities, academic achievements, and personal interests. That's more of just telling a student, look, we can create a bespoke study for you. Today, the student experience extends beyond lecture halls, online learning modules, social media platforms allow students to join clubs, seek out roommates, manage interactions, all through a mobile phone. Student demands are increasing for student-centric services. Something as simple as an electronic access card can allow students to have a seamless experience in the campus, giving them access to a gym, a dining hall, a library, a laboratory, basically make them feel that they don't have restrictions and that their ID card is a card to a seamless experience within the campus. Okay, moving on to trend four. Well, as technology drives change in the workplace and we just heard before me Pradeep talking about what kind of workforce is required you know, for, for the likes of PwC and equivalent companies. 
as that technology and as that shift in expectation gets driven in the workforce, education is really shifting from the one and done sort of a module, you know, serving a very small slice of young adult population to a very broader audience over the life course. This group includes older adults looking to improve and expand their skill set to keep up, keep working and continue learning. Very quickly, I'll, you know, I think, again, my own example. Uh, for the past two years, I've been really, really wanting to go back and do an executive course of some kind, and I haven't been able to figure out what to do. This is where, you know, a university, if they have outreach programs to executives like me, if they have that, that sort of, you know, um, a reach, a network into companies like PwC, Sodexo, you know, JP Morgan's of the world, people like me would know which university can cater to my specific need of continuing education. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the forefront of a fourth industrial rev rev revolution driven by technological changes. New tops, types of jobs are being created, which require skills that may not be part of a tra traditional college or university program anymore. India specifically has actually taken the lead here through the Skill India initiative. We've been promoting vocational and entrepreneurial training to the youth, um, to you know, the have-nots or the lower middle income group. And prior learning initiative to align skills and competencies to the unorganized workforce. Institutions, as I mentioned earlier, thus need to offer programs that offer such skills, trainings, and enhancements that reach a much broader audience than aspiring students. And coming to the fifth and final trend, clearly a fundamental shift in the evolution of brick and mortar universities. Let's very quickly look at the key facts here. And if you see down there, a staggering 98% of US students think that a friendly campus atmosphere is more important to them than a university's reputation. 43% make their decisions based largely on their first impressions of the physical environment of the campus. This is a trend that's already catching up in India. And within the next couple of years, I would not be surprised if you see very similar data points for Indian students as well. So what does it take to create the campus of the future? Well, I don't think we have the answer today, but I think we are on that path and we need to get there soon. Universities really need to be rethinking existing physical spaces, facilitate greater collaboration and interaction at all levels. Environments influence thinking. Therefore, universities need to provide an array of flexible study spaces to allow students to exchange ideas, engage in creative thinking, pool resources, and collaborate on common projects. A core Sodexo belief of engaging with local communities, universities today are finding new ways to engage with their neighbors, businesses, NGOs, public sector organizations, from on-campus senior living to industry-leading science parks, the campus of the future is emerging as an ecosystem of overlapping interests. Also, as competition mounts for international students, universities are providing more inter-campus flexibility to support student mobility. To give you an example, one of the best business colleges, if not the best business college in the world, um, and a college that we very proudly serve, in Shiad, allows students the option of spending equal amount of time at the twin campuses in Paris and Singapore. That's a level of flexibility today that one of the best colleges gives to students. I want to take a couple more minutes to take you through a short video. I promise it's a short video that summarizes the must do for the universities. World is changing. And, and it's so already is our started. I'm going to back. The question is what factors are impacting the future of higher education in India? To understand the factors impacting students' quality of life and help universities build their future plans, we have worked with a global panel of industry experts and identified five underlying trends. The rapidly evolving world is reshaping students' lives. To build a globally competent workforce in the future, their skills and competencies need to be honed at par with the global environment.
universities must ensure their students are offered the right kind of holistic support. By 2020, India will see an increased number of first-generation students pursuing higher education, 27 million plus students to be precise. However, with limited insight, lack of right connections and middle-income background, the first-generation students struggle to succeed. Universities must tailor services and support to help these students unlock their true potential and thrive in this ever-evolving world. Today, millennials feed on sophisticated digital experiences, be it taking admissions online, choosing the curriculum, or joining e-learning classes. With the world heading towards advanced technology, building digitally connected and integrated campuses is no more a luxury but a necessity. Today, technological progress is forcing the traditional academic formats to shift. From choosing classroom learnings to online courses and distance learning programs, blending virtual and physical spaces will allow campuses to connect with the digital natives. When students were asked why would they take e-learning courses, a staggering 72% of them said to learn a new skill or for a continued professional development. With technological advancements, the adult population needs to be agile to earn a competitive edge. Here's room to connect, serve and inspire these learners. So, how to impact the lives of these students? Well, the future of smart campuses is right here. And it is possible with Sodexo and our ecosystem of partners. Let's build and inspire the next generation to be future ready. At Sodexo India, we believe that together we can redefine the future of campus life. Right. Um, again, I hope that I've left some food for thought, some points uh, for you to ponder on, uh, and you know, for you to determine how ready are you to impact the student journey and your campus experience. I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, over at the Sodexo Experience Lounge, right outside uh, the hall over a cup of coffee. Uh, thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Um, absolute pleasure to be here. Congratulations to the winners. And in case uh, you like the presentation, uh, we'll be happy to share a copy with you. Uh, my team's here. I'm here as well. Um, I'm, ho I'm sure they will connect. Thanks again, everybody.